today we want to go to Luhia land. We want to go to Luhia land and I will start with my hometown. My hometown is called Webuye. Webuye. Original name for the place was that waterfall which now is called Webuye Falls. Previously it used to be called Broadlick Falls. But we local call it Nabuyode. Nabuyode. Uh, Nabuyode in uh, in Kibukusu means Huyola. Yani gathering them together so that you pick. The way you gather uh, water in a calabash or the way you gather uh, cereals and you want to take it home. Gathering it together. Huyola. Kukusanya pamoja alafu unaeka pamoja. So that is what Nabuyode means. And you can see from the waterfalls the, the water is gathered in one place then falls in the water. Amzungu came a, 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 a Caucasian came and saw it, saw the falls, and he liked it, and then named it after himself. The Mzungu was called Broadlick. So he named those falls Broadlick Falls. When we were growing up, we used to call it PTF, meaning BDF, Bravo Delta Foxtrot. Broadlick Falls. And you'll even find people of my age and above, when they are going to Ebuye, they say, we are going to Elufuosi. Elufuosi. Fuos, uh, Fuosi is the mispronunciation of falls. Falls. The waterfalls. Now, the, initi the initial name was, uh, the initial name was uh, Nabuyore. Then this Muzungu came and called it Broadlick Falls, and the town also came to be known as Broadlick Falls, just like Nyahururu used to be called Thompson Falls. The day Jombo Kenyatta came to open Pan Paper Mills, I was there. I was there in the, the crowd that was there, 1972. 1971-72. Uh, he asked the provincial commissioner the original name of that place. If the, if the provincial commissioner would have known, he would have told Jomo Kenyatta that it was called Nabuyode. But he was confused. He looked at his DC. The DC looked at the DO for, for Bungoma East. Uh, and then uh, Jomo Kenyatta was saying he wants a, a a local name, which is not common. He did not want Kinawekesa or fuller names. And then uh, as the Dio was looking to his feet, he remembered that he had taken his shoes from a cobbler who was called Webuye. So that is how Webuye got its name. Then we have a town called Bungoma, the county headquarters. Some people wrongly say that Bungoma is connected to the drums, Eingoma. No, not at all. As a Sabaot, I would not allow Bungoma to be called a place of drums. Uh, Bukusus call our Sabaot people Abangoma. Abangoma. So, uh, the place where Abangoma, just like Buganda, you see we have Buganda, but the people who come from Buganda are the Baganda. So Bangoma came from Bungoma. That is how Sebeis and Sabaots are called by Bukus or Luhias, they are called Abangoma. And where they come from is Ebungoma. So originally it used to be uh, occupied by Sabaot and Sebei. Next to Webuye, there is a place called Lugulu. Lugulu. The, the, you people call it Lugulu, but Luhias, we Luhias call it Elukulu. But those of my age and above call it 
elukulu wa Ford Ford like Ford asili and Ford uh, Kenya now there was a mzungu there was a european a missionarist who came and started the friends quakers church at lugulu now that hill lugulu in kiluya means hill kerema eh tagekoyumuga ga kerema tigo the hill the mzungu went and stayed on that hill and then people you know there are so many hills in webuye there is jetambi there is chimoi there is chimangeti that is where nandi hill starts so that hill where he was staying to differentiate it from chetambi to differentiate it from chimoi to, to differentiate with others they call it the hill of ford lugulu lwa ford now we go to our capital kakamega Kakamega, there are two versions. Kakamega, there is a version that Kalenjins used to call it Kagubek. Kagubek, the place that where people go and they never come back. So some people would leave Kabsabet Kab to Kakamega and be absorbed in Luhia language, in the Luhia tradition and be, be Luhiaized. So whenever people used to ask, where, where is Arab, Arab, Arab Rono? Arab Rona wendi wendiga wanasema alienda Gagumek that is one of the options uh, the other one which is more popular was uh, there there was a drought and the uh, food was in scarcity and so someone went to to the forest Kakamega forest to hunt but he did not find a, 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 an antelope so when he came back, he found people, when they saw him coming, they hid the ugali because of the hunger that time. So they, they hid the ugali, and when he was asked, uh, what, uh, Mustuni, how did you find the hunting? He said, ah, there was an antelope which came near me, but I don't know wh- why I didn't kill it. How close was it? It was as close as from here to where you have hidden your ugali. Secret is out, Ugali was taken, they started eating. But these people started complaining. When he was eating, they were saying, Hahameka. Oh, Hahameka. In Kiswahili, I cannot talk of it in any other language. But in Kiswahili, you can say, Kamemega. 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 So that is where the name Kakamega came from. But the original name for Kakamega was Sheywe. If you get a Luhia of my age and above and is going to Kakamega, he'll tell you, I am going to Sheyue. Sheyue is a broom. In those years, Kakame- the Kakamega area, we can divide it into two. In one side, they had so many good grass which people would come from far and away and far and go and make brooms. So, uh, they, uh, that is why it was called Sheyue, a broom. But on the other side, to the north of the town, where we have the stadium, uh, it, it was called Buhungu. Buhungu. In Bantu, a place of something, a place of Bagandas are called Buganda. So Buhungu is a place of Hungu, Chihungu. Now Chihungu are the army worms. Chihungu is the army worm. So in Buhungu Stadium area, there used to be a lot of army worms. So the name Buhungu means an area where we have so many army worms. While we are coming out of Kakamega, I'll tell you, a man who was born during the time when there are so many uh, army worms is called Wahungu. And a woman who was born uh, during the time or a place where there are so many army worms was known as Nahungu or is known as Nahungu. Now we go to a place called Malava. Malava, there is also a forest, just like a Kamega forest. Uh, Malava got its name, some people call it Malava Cabras, because Cabras, the sub-tribe that stays there is Cabras. But Malava... 
I don't know about Malaba in in Busia, but Malava in Kakamega, somebody went to hunt in in the Malava forest. He came back. Somebody asked him, just like the Kakamega story, how was hunting. He said, "Omuchuru kuno ni Malava." Omuchuru kuno ni Malava. Meaning, this forest is bare. You go throughout, you don't find any animal to kill, any antelope to kill. It is just bare. So when he said, Omuchuru kuno ni Malava, this forest is bare. Now you know how Malava got its name. We have a place, uh, next to Malava, we have a place called Matete. Matete is a Luhia word for a place where we have a lot of grasshoppers. Grasshoppers. Grasshopper in Luhia is called Amatete. Amatete. Uh, grasshopper, the brother to grasshopper is called uh, locust. Locust in Luhia is called Chisike. So any Luhia called Wasike or Nasike, was born during locust time. Then we have a place called Kaburengu. Kaburengu is a, a place of indominable people. Indominable people. I can say indominable is the, is the nearest, but it is not the exact correct place. These are people whom you could not convince them easily they had thick headed. Uh, they had thick headed. Uh, you tell them something, they are, it is hard to convince them. Then next to that, we have a place called Chimoi. Chimoi is a Kalenji name, just like Kimangeti and whatever. Those are Kalenji names, but Chimoi is the name of a Kalenji man. The same name applies to a father to a former president. One of our former presidents, his father was called Kimoi. But Cabrasis could not pronounce Kimoi. They called it Chimoi. Luandet is a rock, a large rock. Kwa Kiswahili, we call it uh, Mwamba. Mwamba. We have a place called Huisero. Huisero and Nyandarwa both mean uh, hide. But I'm told the hide in uh, Huisero, there was an Isuha and a Muidaho who decided to slaughter a, a cow. But the Idaho, uh, after slaughtering the Idaho, slept and found that the Isuha had stolen the whole cow and had only left the hide. So he said, you have just left me with a hide. We have Mumias. Mumias was named after the Wanga king or Wanga chief. But what people do not know that Mum Nabongo Mumia was not that was not his name. Nabongo Mumia was called Makoha. That is his name, Makoha. Makoha is a name which means ash. Whenever a woman gave birth and kids would die, still birth, uh, it used to the woman would apply a lot of ash on her face and complain. So when she had another baby, she would go and place it on a rod and throw the kid away. That is literally. But in reality, they used to arrange with somebody, a stranger, whom they did not have blood relationship with. So this stranger would go and bring up the child, and the child would be brought back during the circumcision time. And who is this stranger who came and picked up Makoha? It was a member of the Tesol tribe. A member of the Tesol tribe took Makoha when he was young, and he took him to Busia. Amagoro Teso area and stayed with that king of the Wanga. 
So the king went back when he was uh, about to be circumcised. He was circumcised among his people and later he became the king of the Wanga. But you see, he could speak. There are two reasons here which are both applicable. They don't alternate, but those are both are applicable. One, he used to speak Luhia with a, a strong Teso accent. And you see, Teso in Kiluya is called Omumia. One Muteso is called Omumia. And if there are many, they are called Avamia. That is what Luya called. Just like Kikuyu's call, Masai's, uh, Akafi, Kananyo Kafi. So the way Kikuyu's called Masai Akafi, the Luya's called Teso, Avamia, or if it is one, Omumia. So whenever he used to speak broken uh, Luhia, they would, they would say that, that, that Muteso, eh? that Mumia. Another reason is, take it in my home area, in, in Huatenge's family. I am Huatenge, son of Lando. We have Huatenge, son of we have two James Huatenges, but we have around eight Huatenges. Others adopted other names, but uh, we are all Huatenge, grandchildren, grandsons of Huatenge. So when the, we are talking, uh, there is uh, Edward Huatenge, his mother is a Bukuso. There is, uh, you get my point. So when we are talking, when whenever they talk about Edward Huatenge, they say, Uyombukuso. Or when they talk about James Huatenge Tondo, they say Uyomukabras, and so on and so forth. So in, in, in Luhia tradition, it is a pride for one to be referred to by his mother's tribe. So he was being called uh, Muteso because he is the one who had a Teso background. His mother may not have been Amteso, but he stayed in Tesoland for long, such that uh, he, he spoke Luya with a lot of Teso accent. That is why you find that uh, a Masai who stays in Karatina, when he tells another Kikui, when, when a Kikui annoys him, he says, Okatolinkane, instead of Okatoroe. So for Kikui, you will understand, when somebody is talking Kikui and say, Okatolinkane, Instead of Okatoroe, you'll understand he's speaking good Kikuyu, but he's not a Kikuyu. So, uh, Makoha used to have mannerism that was Teso like. So, they started calling Mumia, and it stuck. Just like Jomo Kenyatta was started being called because of his belt, and the name stuck. Lastly, uh, lastly, there are three towns, three places in Luyaland of a similar name. In Hamisi constituency, we have a place called Shamahoho. And somewhere in Kakamega, we have a place uh, called Mahoho. And in Lugari, we have a place called Luhoho. All these three places, Ishiamahoho, is the way Tirik is called a place of Mahoho. And Luhoho is a place where Abu Tachonis, with the Tachonis, called the place Luhoho. It's just the, the same as Tirik is called Eshamahoho, but we call Luhoho, but we say a place of Luhoho. And then Kakamega, we have a place called Mahoho. And Mahoho, which is the three places, are those crowbats with a white neck that says Mahoho, ho, ho, Mahoho. Ho. Lastly, Lugari. You have heard me calling myself Asai Bay. You have heard myself calling uh, myself Asabaut. You have heard me calling myself Eluhia. The Tachoni forefathers 
left Mount Elgon area, came and stayed among Luya, in the middle of Bukusus and Cabrasis, and settled at a place. So when they settled, they were being asked by their Kalenjin uh, fellows, when will you come back? And they would say, Mitrachoni, Mitrachoni. In Sabaot, Mitrachoni has the same meaning as the Nandi for Anyonei, Anyoni, meaning I'm coming. So these people got annoyed and said, Mitrachoni, Mitrachoni, Tachoni. Then we were called Tachoni. It's not that we touch on something, no. Uh, touch on. But our forefathers settled at a place called Lukova Lua Akari. Lukova Lua Akari. But Muzungu could not pronounce Lukova Lua Akari. Uh, he said Lugari. I want to thank you for your constant uh, uh, sending something to the TIL number. You don't know how much. I am grateful for that. Thank you.